policies and procedures that have been in place have not been static for the last 15 or 20 years. There have been periodic amendments, periodic additions and changes. So there's a, there's a, a program or there's, a, there's a, a method in place now with the department to amend and revise policies and procedures. So I'm certain that that's what's going to be applied to this. Um, as a policy is amended or as it's revised in some sense, it'll be put before uh, the uh, officers for review and consideration. They allow comment. Um, it comes back before some adoption by the department and then where it's reinforced in training. And that's been my experience with other communities too. So there is that give and take mm -hmm. that occurs. Okay. Okay. We looked at this a few years ago and the chief, uh, <coughs> she certainly bought into it and believed in it, but at the time was using the MML as a benchmarking tool to, to amend the current policies. And quite honestly, I think by her own recognition, um, it, we, we need to just go through the formal process of, of having somebody like OSS come in. Um, and I just want to point out, this is not just the administration and risk management saying, here you go, police department, um, they're, they're on board. I mean, they're, they're buying into this. The chief is a believer in this. Um, she, I know she's not here tonight, but uh, she'll be the first one to tell you that, that you know, this is, this is good government. I mean, I, I'm bringing this, this firm in. sense to, to talk fire truck for a minute, Chief, you want to talk about, you know, just because I know uh, their firm was involved with, you know, I don't know if you want to wait till the final estimate tomorrow, because they're going to be coming in and, get, and kind of looking at it. Um, they, you know, no one from the insurance company has actually looked at it. We just got the, uh, procedurally though, Steve, you want to talk about what, what will happen? Um, the city of Taylor secures automobile physical damage, so for comprehensive and collisions, so we've got protection for this vehicle. Uh, there's two enhancements that occur with critical vehicles like fire trucks. We have agreed amounts, so there's no depreciation. We're going to make sure that this is replaced, or if it's a repair situation, that there's no depreciation for new parts or anything like that. Also, the, uh, the $10,000 physical damage duckling you carry will be waived because your driver was not at fault. So this will be covered first dollar under the Michigan No Fault provisions no expense to the city. Having said that, um, we've got the claim report of the insurance company. I know they've got an adjuster assigned. I'm assuming they'll be in touch with the chief probably, if not tomorrow, first thing um, not today. He called me today. You already did? Okay, well there you go, the system's working. What I've authorized, what I've said to do is, is you know, get the ball rolling. Um, you've got a vehicle that's critical to your operation. You've got a vehicle that probably has some custom made parts or elements. Get this to your preferred vendor, get your preferred vendor involved, get them ordering parts, get them, get the process going. Um, but don't pull the trigger as far as actually doing the work until the adjuster has seen it. Now, it sounds like the vehicle is going to have to go to Wisconsin, so I'm fairly confident that the adjuster is going to see this thing. But my point is, is just to get the thing rolling, and I think we're, we've done that successfully so far. So, my concern at this stage, and the chief didn't have a concern about what we spoke earlier was a replacement vehicle, um, mutual aid can assist or where you are in that perspective, but uh, there's some coverage in the policy for a replacement vehicle for a period of time, and I, and I don't know that information off the top of my head, but we can help and address that if that's the case. Madam Chair, along those lines, we are, we, we geez, a couple weeks ago we started the process of looking at a second new rig. We're in the process now of obtaining final pricing that would mirror or be very similar to the rig that we have. Um, if we get the, the, the pricing in place that we think that we're going to get, we will likely have that on the agenda at the next city council meeting for approval. Um, we have some funding that uh, Jason and I are, are still working through that will not touch fund balance. It's, it's coming from a different account. So we think we can do that. That will, that will give us some time, but they're already talking about probably February before that rig's back in service. That was the estimate we were given today <coughs> with all the damage. Uh, so we'll we'll be be the 
Well, that's what we're trying to hold off on to see if it's going to be a total loss. I mean, you know, the, the first look, it doesn't appear to be that it's as bad as initially thought. So, and the manufacturer is fairly confident that this is going to be a rebuild, not a, not a replace. So, but we will work through that detail as we bring some finality to the decision of, of buying another one or not. I don't think I always look at the frame yet. I mean, that's the big that's thing. Correct. Well, this has an effect on our future policy prices. Yeah. Well, that's what no, I, it, not not adversely. Your your a physical damage claim is something that an, an insurance company can quantify, get their arms around, and know it's going to be settled in a certain period of time. The thing that affects your claim are liability claims. You, know, you never know how long a case is going to go on, how long the uh, litigation expenses, how high the litigation expenses, and what's the ultimate potential for damages. Physical damage and property claims, unless it's a catastrophic claim, are, are easily managed and easily addressed. And um, <coughs> I, you know, if this was a total of a $400,000 vehicle, you know, it, it, it may have an impact on your auto physical damage, but that part of your premium is such a small component, it's, it's not going to have that type of an impact when you weigh the premium over the different lines. We're, we're, I think Sheila, we're excited about the OSS component because your liability in relationship to law enforcement and your automobile liability in, force in relationship to police vehicles is a huge part of your expense. So if we start to get that under control, and take that back under control, if we can go to the carriers and demonstrate proactive efforts, that's going to help there. That gives me a tool to beat them up with. Thanks, Steve. Um, let's go back to number 13 now. Wait, can I ask one more question on 12? No. Oh. Yeah, it's home. Unless you want to name it. Sure. Uh, Jerry, I, I normally assume that this was um, some of the old stuff that, that we didn't catch when we caught. You're saying that these were, after that, they were unrelated. If we have these that weren't charged, do we have reason to believe that there's others out there that we just haven't figured out yet? I mean, why, what yeah, made these that? stand out and not get charged to the taxes? If it wasn't, I think the old issue was uh, a the new report and we had a code and we weren't running the report off the right code, right? You're saying that's not what happened here. That would, that, my understanding that is not what happened here. Is there a bigger lingering problem or is this just a fluke for a single property in the city of Taylor? It's a fair question and without talking to Michelle, I, I don't know if it's a big answer. Um, there are, because what we get these charges, Michelle collects them from June 1 through Michelle. Winter, I'm sorry, from the district court. Um, so she prepares all of these charges and gives them to my office to bring the city council to add on to the summer tax roll. Um, so I don't think these are, I think that's a good question. I don't have to. Just maybe something to look into in case there's a, to get a, another yeah, smoke going on there that this is just the tip of the iceberg I'd rather know sooner than later. So maybe maybe it's just a one one odd situation, I don't know. And what the situation that may occur is what happened here, and I believe last week we didn't address a different one. The charges occurred prior to the Mayan house, which is in the spring of 2016. So the taxes hadn't hit our tax roll yet. So without doing any kind of due diligence, you, you don't know mm -hmm. what's coming until your tax bill shows up. So there so very, well, very, well okay. uh, very well could be very well could be other that will be uh, asked for address. Because of the, the timing of the sale compared to the separate tax. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And our, our recommendation would be no to each one that comes forward. Right. Okay. Thank you.